imperialism. The impact of imperialism and colonialism on the continent of Africa. And, and, and that'll allow you to uh, explore it and then get some background information in reference to uh, what you're doing. And I feel like I have a lot of budding information. And like worst case scenario, though I don't think this will happen, if I run out of stuff to talk about with imperialism in, um, and like colonialism and the mistreatment of Africans, I can tie it back to colonialism in the U.S. and how bad the Americans did the natives. And it's like the same ballpark. Okay, well, that's what you ought to be able to do. If Thank you and welcome to the show today. The topic this morning is the impact of imperialism and colonialism on the African continent. And to talk about the impact of colonialism and imperialism on Africa, uh, we have with us Alana McLaughlin. Now, Lana, let's start off today by uh, having you to give us some information in reference to your background, uh, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of eventually bringing you to us, but I also must remind the uh, audience, in case you forget, that this is the beginning of the ninth year that we've had with you, and uh, we certainly appreciate you, and we, what we would like for you to do is to give us some background, education, and some of your experiences uh, so that our audience might know more about you and some of the things that have happened to you since you first started with us more than nine years ago. Let's do it from that perspective. Well, Dr. Haney, I am in the 11th grade. I go to the Nashville School of Arts where my specialty is music. I play trumpet and French horn and piano. I do jazz band, classical, and marching band with the Pearl Cone Marching Band in North Nashville. Growing up, I loved music and I still do, but I also had a pull towards politics. I've always enjoyed learning why our government is set up the way that it is and why laws are established and the process that we go through to get said laws established. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to have a say so in things. And so my dream is to be a political commentator. I do plan on going to college for it. I'm undecided as of right now, but that is my lifelong dream. And I believe that I will have a show of my own <laughs> one day. That basically sums up my background and why I'm on the show. And I feel like the show gives me kind of a head start on giving my opinion and spreading my knowledge to others because ultimately that's all I want to do. And I feel like I can appeal to my age group a lot better seeing as they will probably respond better to someone who looks like them and is of their same you know, age range as opposed to listening to Fox News or CNN. Very good. And so, Lana, let's talk about, I think we said that the topic today is the impact of imperialism and colonialism on the African continent. And during the last part of this segment, let's have you to give us some information in reference to the definition of imperialism, colonialism in the African continent, and why this should be important in terms of what we're talking about today. Well, imperialism and colonialism are often confused. Most people think that they're interchangeable, though they are not. Colonialism is a result of imperialism, and imperialism is when a larger, more powerful country takes control of a smaller country. For instance, imperialism, could be 
described as Europe's influence on North America or Europe's influence on Africa, which we'll be getting into in the next segment. Colonialism, when most people hear it, they think of Jamestown. They think of the early settlers here in the United States. But most people fail to realize that colonialism was a widespread thing, though it came in waves. There was the imperialism around the time of the early United States and the new imperialism uh, at the end of the 19th century, which is what we'll be focusing on today. And this is when Africa is divided during this period of new imperialism, I think yes. as it was called. This is when British, German, all these forces came in and changed the face of Africa forever. Very good. And, 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 and so what we'll do, we'll take our uh, first commercial break in, in the next minute or so. But what I wanted, want you to do during the sec second segment is to enlarge upon this whole idea of imperialism and colonialism and speak specifically to the uh, uh, African continent because I think that uh, you've got a lot of information in reference to uh, the relationship between these three ideas and what I'd like for you to do is to uh, demonstrate to me because I was somewhat reluctant to talk about mm -hmm. this as a topic with you this morning but I think you've demonstrated that you've got some good information in reference to it and that you're ready to prepare and prepare to deliver it. So when we take our first commercial break, we'll come back and we'll give you an opportunity to go full force and to tell the audience of the impact of imperialism and colonialism on the African continent. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Back to the second segment of the show for today, and then we'll uh, talk about the impact of imperialism and colonialism on the, the African, African continent. continent. And yep. then we're going to get into it. We'll have uh, t uh, eight minutes to this do This is going to be eight, right? Yeah, and then eight ten. Minutes, and then ten minutes to do the second segment. Got it. I think that I'm going to make this segment like leading up to imperialism and then the ten minutes like during and after. Okay, yeah, okay. Like, however you want to do it. Uh, okay. As long as you can keep on doing it and keep on speaking and, and, and making noise over there. You don't have any problem. The only time the problem with the television is when it goes silent. Nobody's <laughs> saying anything. See, you got to, see because that's you when don't people, have that problem that's with when me. people stop and look and start around. For they'll be listening look, in bed and they yeah, sit up. And and <laughs> <laughs> it's gone silent. Oh, you know, tele television don't go silent. <laughs> no, no talk show. But I think this is, this is a good show. Demonstrating you have some knowledge and some information. That Did you hear my neck pop? What? Did you hear me pop my neck? Was that your neck? Uh, yeah. I thought that was you. Let me see. Well, I already did. Did you yeah. pop it? Uh huh. Let me see that. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin, and she's giving us some information in reference to the impact of imperialism and colonialism on the African uh, continent. And so, Alana, let's take this second segment to uh, become involved with uh, what we mean when we say uh, what kind of impacts are we talking about and what were the uh, consequences of all of this activity, and et cetera. Speak from that perspective. To fully understand the effects of colonialism and imperialism in Africa, we must study what imperialism and colonialism is and what made it unique to what happened to Africa. 
So in the last segment, I talked about how imperialism and colonialism are not interchangeable, though most people believe that they are. In imperialism, the Webster de definition for imperialism is when a larger country takes control of a smaller country because they're less powerful. And whatever the larger the mother country does is up to the mother country. And we see that in effects in like early, early colonial United States, Jamestown, etc. But what happened to Africa is much different than what happened in North America because the United States ended up becoming an empire. We see during this new imperialism period, the late 19th century to the early 20th, in the United States around this time, we were in during we were experiencing the Industrial Revolution. America was on a high. We were bringing in lots of money. There was wave, new waves of immigration. Things were on the up and up for most Americans. But in Africa, things were totally different. The scramble for Africa is the term coined to describe how European countries were fighting and fighting and scrambling to carve out Africa and to make it into new colonies so that they could have power in Africa and so that Africa could feed their greed. Now, the scramble for Africa had three different categories that all made it come together. The first was economic. Now, like I mentioned, the Industrial Revolution was going on during this time period, and not just in America, but also in Europe. And because of this, European countries were constantly looking for countries where they could export raw materials, where they could have a profitable market, and a good, safe, and secure place to build companies and to mine, etc. And so they immediately thought Africa and Asia, but Africa also, Africa obviously got a more negative effect of imperialism. Now, after they figured out that Africa would be just such an economic boost, the political factors came into it. Now, some of the big European powers like Britain, France, Germany, Italy, etc., all of these countries were fighting for power. They all wanted to be the next big country, the next this, the next that. And one of the easiest ways to be able to do that is to conquer and colonize these African then tribes and ethnic groups that weren't necessarily colonies or countries yet. Now the last is social. Now during the Industrial Revolution, things in Europe weren't always on the up and up like how I described they were in the United States. There was lots of social displacement from people in rural areas whose homes are now like mining towns or like factory towns. There was lots of unemployment and lots of homelessness. And so initially, even before these European powers discovered the political and all these other sides, all these other positives for um, colonizing Africa, the first thought that these European countries had was, oh, we're just going to send our surplus population to these settler colonies in Africa, and that'll help with the unemployment and the homelessness. And that was the initial thought that was what was supposed to happen to Africa but of course we see in 2019 that that did not happen. Now German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck he kind of knew that since the scramble for Africa was so intense that there would be conflict and so his way to combat this conflict was to have the Berlin Convention. Now, representatives from all the European countries who would eventually go on to colonize Africa were represented, but there were no representatives from the African continent. And, and that's going to prove detrimental very, very soon. But in this convention, in this conference, the Berlin Act was birthed, and that basically was a, a guideline of how to rule the Africans, how to tame them, what to do, how to work with the natives, et cetera, and et cetera. But, of course, it was not very accurate because there was no one from Africa present at this. And the biggest thing that came out of the Berlin Convention was the fact that these European powers sat with a big map of Africa and carved out new countries in Africa. So that's how the modern day face of Africa, that's how that came to be. So 
now that Africa's carved out and now that they have a plan for Africa, they start to put it into action. These European powers are coming over, basically telling these, these tribes and these groups that, you know, you're under our jurisdiction now. And new imperialism and the Industrial Revolution, this came almost immediately after the end of slavery. And so now the Africans are worried. They're like, we, slavery just ended and now we're just being re-enslaved in our own homes. And that was the beginning of the horrible, horrible impact that imperialism had on Africa. And, and, and so in a real sense, uh, the slave system, the slave trade, had decimated the African population, but as that population came back, uh, there was a new wave, a uh, new desire on the part of the Europeans to do other things Definitely. with Africa, other to enslave Africans on their own continent. Because at the end of the slave trade, which was highly profitable, these European countries were looking almost immediately for a new way to bring in profit. And the Industrial Revolution came at a very, very great time, but there was a lack of workers and a lack of raw materials, both of which they decided they were going to get from Africa. Good, very good. And of course, uh, Lana, what, what, what we'll do, we'll take our uh, second commercial break, And but I do want you to understand that I, I, I thought that uh, the information that you gave in reference to that sort of highlighted it, and uh, I'm pleased with uh, the activity that you did in bringing that part of us together. But what I wanted to do with this final segment is to give you an opportunity to bring all of this information together and simply to talk about the impact that uh, imperialism. imperialism had upon the African continent. And I think that that'll be enough for us. And so we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Because sometimes I don't have anything to say in reference to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to pull it all together. Now, what the next show is for? Uh, Walker. Walker is that Walker? Uh -huh. What time do you think we'll be done? Around two. Around two, two, the two thirty or somewhere. I got I got to be at the church at five, so we'll come home and then go back. Mm -hmm. That's the time we didn't use, you know that? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know. So you don't, you don't see it, but I can yeah, see it. Yeah, I don't, I'm yeah. just going yeah. the flow. Yeah, well, that's it. all right. <laughs> On the on the wall, okay. You like them more? Is it gonna say we'll be right back? Like this is not the original. No. Okay, so you know how we were having the problem that that big thing was kind of cut off. Well, he just put another one up there. And so now you can see the full comments with Dr. James Haney. Uh -huh. So do you want to keep that? Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, that, okay. let's, let's, yeah, let's keep that. 
Yeah, let's keep that. Okay, this is the last segment, uh, 10 minutes. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin and she's given us some information in reference to uh, the impact of colonialism and imperialism, Lana, had upon the African continent. And I think you gave us some excellent information in terms of laying out uh, the conflict that we have to deal with. But let's take the last 10 minutes of this program to give you an opportunity to develop this idea of uh, the impact and, and, and the reasons for some of the things that we're talking about here. Now, one of the biggest effects of imperialism and colonialism on Africa was the loss of culture. There was this idea that the Europeans had that, oh, we're the, the smartest and the most able people in the world, and so everybody should try to be more like Europe. And so after carving out Africa at the Berlin Convention, these these powers believed that they were going to take their Western ideals and Western culture and Western language and throw it onto Africa, which in turn stripped Africans of their native tongue and their native clothing and their way of life before they were disturbed. One of the darker effects of imperialism was, was is ethnic conflict. Now, most people they hear about different African countries that are in civil war or that are just in the dumps and they hear about it and they believe, oh, Africa, oh, they're just crazy and they're this and that and they need to be tamed. But most people fail to realize that there is a reason why these African countries are in the state that they're in. In 1994, the Rwandan genocide, the Tutsis and the Hutus. Most people don't know that back when Germany had control of Rwanda, a lot of times they would, they had this system of racism and, and segregation between the Tutsis and the Hutus, and often the Germans would cater more to Tutsis, which really wedged the Tutsis and the Hutus apart. Mm -hmm. About 30, not even 30, uh, a, a few years after the end, the end of imperialism, though its, its effect has never really ended, a few years after the a, official end of imperialism, we Formal see... Formal imperialism. Exactly. We see, mm. or, and new imperialism. We mm. see the Rwandan genocide, and most people think, oh, and, and, and I'm sure in 1994, the Americans and Europeans who were watching the genocide from the comfort of their homes were just like, oh, these Africans, they need to be tamed, and they need somebody to come in and help. But they fail to realize that because of this systematic racism, that the Germans put upon the Tutsis and the Hutus, it drove them apart. And so the Hutus finally gained control of Rwanda and in 1994 killed 800,000 Tutsis in the span of two or three months, I believe. And a lot of people fail to realize where these, this type of stuff comes from. For instance, in the Congo, they're in civil war right now. A lot of people don't understand why they're in civil war or what's happening or why the M23 has control of the Congo, but it all stems back from imperialism. It stems back from pitting these countries against each other. Mm -hmm. It stems from ripping them out of their homes, forcing them to work, forcing them to find shelter in these gangs, in these groups, in these terrorist groups, forcing them to compete with Europeans for a way to live. We see in the Virunga State Park, which is home to the rare mountain gorillas in the Congo, the Congo is currently under the control of the M23, and the state park is struggling to stay open while there are powers that are coming in that are trying to mine in the park, though mining is illegal in the park, and that are trying to take away the livelihood of these people. And it just makes me sick that so many outsiders don't realize that Africa as a whole, the continent, did not choose to be the way that it is. And it certainly did not choose to be portrayed the way that it is. 
And so I feel like it is my duty on the show to be able to bring a different insight and the stuff like this because I know that once I first learned about the Rwandan genocide it, it scared me I thought how could people be so cruel to each other then I realized people aren't naturally just that cruel to each other there's some type of outside you know interference and I realized that that was Europe that was people coming in and pitting these countries together oh when I mentioned in the last segment that at the Berlin convention there were no representatives from Africa there when they were carving out what the countries, all these borders and whatnot, oftentimes they would separate ethnic groups and tribes that were allies that had similar like farming techniques or agricultural techniques. They would split up these countries and then put them, or they would make a new country or like a new colony with ethnic groups that didn't really get along with each other, that had different ways of life. For instance, with the Tutsis and the Hutus, I wanna say that the Hutus tended to be more cattle herders and the Tutsis were more workers. And so Germans would often favor the Tutsis because this was during the Industrial Revolution and they would put those people in the industries while the Hutus were people who should have been around more cattle herders and should have been around people who had a similar you know, way of life is them. And, and all these little things cause the major problems. Ethnic conflict is still going on in Africa. There are some conflicts that are still going on from the, from the period of new imperialism. Like I mentioned with Rwanda, a lot of the Hutus who were killing Tutsis in Rwanda fled to the Congo. And now we see that the Congo is in civil war. And it's honestly just, a uh, it, it just, it never ends. It's like the domino effect. You know, you come in and you tip this domino and then all these people are affected and they go on to affect other people and it never ends. And so when a lot of, when people say that, oh, um, European powers need to come in and tame Africans and, or when Americans say that they need to be Americanized so that they're civilized and so that they can work together, it's not their fault. It is purely because people came into their home, stole land from them, and left them. They took the raw materials from Africa. They took so, so much gold, ivory, etc., stuff that they were originally trading, but Europe became greedy and they figured, I don't want to trade, this just should be mine. And so they came and they stole, they stole land, they stole culture, they stole resources, and they stole happiness. I mentioned in the last segment that new imperialism and the Industrial Revolution came pretty close after the end of the slave trade. These people were already being uprooted from their homes and shipped overseas to work for people who didn't care about them in the slightest. And now there's another form of slavery, but just from the comfort of their own homes. And that's not right. And I feel like a lot of countries, other continents failed Africa. We as Americans failed Africa because even in 1994 during the Rwandan genocide, it was televised. How did we allow that to go on for two, three months, allow 800,000 Tutsis to be slaughtered with clubs and machetes and be beheaded and, and kidnapped and recruited into all these militant groups? I feel like the country and our ignorance towards the problem honestly allowed a lot of this stuff to go on. And this is not the first instance of America letting something go on. And this is not the first instance of America turning a blind eye to colonialism. We see that with the natives. We took their land, started the reservation policy, and in reality uprooted them from their native lands, tried to Americanize them, and then just left them to fend